Hey there my fellow intellectuals, today we're going to be looking at a problem in classical mechanics where we're going to write down the Lagrangian and the equations of motion for this system. So we have the system where we have a table and we have two masses, little m and big M. And little m is on top of the table where big M is attached through a hole uh, at the bottom of the table. And they're attached by the string that has a total length little l, which I'll just write here. And so we're going to determine the Lagrangian and determine the equations of motion from that Lagrangian. So the way we're going to do this is that we're going to recall that the Lagrangian, remember, is just defined to be the kinetic energy, which we'll denote T here, subtracting the potential energy, which I'll write as U. So we can further divide this as the kinetic energy of the bigger mass, big M, plus the kinetic energy of little m, now subtracting the potential energy of the bigger mass minus potential energy of the smaller mass. So this is how we break down this Lagrangian into its constituent parts. We just take the Lagrangian of the bigger mass and the Lagrangian of the smaller mass and we add them together. So what are we gonna do to simplify is we're gonna set the potential energy arbitrarily of the table to be zero. And the reason we're going to do that is that we're going to let the potential energy of the smaller mass just equal zero in that case. So this is an arbitrary choice. You can pick the zero of the potential energy to be anywhere, but for the simplicity of this problem, I'm going to pick it to be at the table itself. So that'll simplify things a little bit. So I'm going to scroll down here. And we are going to look at first, let's write down the, hmm, let's write down the kinetic energy for little m. So the kinetic energy for little m, we can think of it as you know one half little m times its velocity squared. But remember that this velocity, this velocity is going to have two components, right? We have a we have a radial velocity, which I'll denote by that orange arrow pointing outward. So the radial velocity is just how far the you know the radius extends from the center of that hole. And we also have a tangential velocity, which is denoted by this other arrow where it's just going, you can think of it as an angular velocity. So we have, as we can write here, we can write one half m, we can have v radial squared plus v theta squared. So we need to find expressions to determine how to write these things. And using the notation in classical mechanics, we're going to denote these velocities as dot derivatives essentially. So the first one is pretty easy. So we have one half m. The velocity in the radial direction we can think of that as just r dot squared. Remember where r is just r dot r is equal to the derivative of r with respect to time. So we're just looking at the radial variable and how it changes with respect to time and that's just the radial velocity. Now with the tangential velocity one might recall that there is a relationship between the angular velocity and the tangential velocity in that if you remember the tangential velocity is equal to the radius times the the angular velocity so v is equal to r theta dot so I'll write actually v theta is equal to r theta dot so if we square that we're going to get plus r squared theta dot squared so that's the kinetic energy of the smaller mass now we're going to write down the kinetic energy of the bigger mass. And if we're going to let the variable r denote how far the smaller mass is from the center of that hole, then the difference, right, so I'm going to draw this in a different color here. Maybe we'll go with light blue. So this length I've drawn in blue here, we can denote that blue as L subtract r. So I'm just going to draw that arrow right there. That is the length of that blue uh, section of the rope. So going back to orange coloring here, we can write the position of that of that bigger mass, right? So the position of the bigger mass, let's say, it's, it, well, the kinetic energy is equal to one half big M R M dot squared, but we can think of R M as just L subtract R. Okay. So we take, in the time, we take the time derivative of that rm dot, that just equals to negative r dot, but then we squared, so rm dot squared, that's equal to r dot squared. 
So the kinetic energy of the big mass is just one half big M R dot squared. Okay, so we have two of the three pieces of our Lagrange now. The last piece is the potential energy of the big mass, which I've just circled there. So the potential energy of capital M, we can write that as just mg, right, or mgh, sorry. And I'm going to write it with a negative sign because it is lower than the zero point that we've decided for this problem. So we've decided the zero point to be at the table height, which is u equals zero. But since we're going to be a bit lower than that with the bigger m, we're going to have a negative sign there. And this h can simply be represented by L subtract R. So that's the height below the table here. Now I'm actually going to distribute this minus mg to both terms. So we'll have uh, switching the terms a bit. We'll have mgr minus mgl. And this is just a constant. Okay. And that's going to be important for later. But now we have all the pieces for our Lagrangian. So remember L we defined it up here to be the sum of those kinetic energies plus this, or subtracting this potential energy term, and now we can put it all together. So the first term we have is one half m r dot m squared. Oops, sorry, let me get rid of the big M there. And then we have plus now for the little m we have both the tangential and radial velocity. So one half little m we have r oops r dot squared plus r squared theta dot squared. And then finally we have to subtract the kinetic energy, which is gonna introduce a positive sign now because, well, let's just write it out and we'll see it. So we'll have minus the potential energy of minus mgr minus mgl. Okay, so this minus sign will turn that into a positive sign, but that's not important right now. What's important now is that we have our total Lagrangian right here. This is the Lagrangian of our joint system. Great. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to change color to, let's say, white here. And we're going to now plug this all into the Euler-Lagrange equations. So if you don't recall, the Euler-Lagrange equations are a way to extrapolate the equations of motion for both variables in the system. So both variables being theta, so variables are right here, variables r, r, and theta. And for each position variable that we have, each, we can call them a generalized coordinate, right? So let's call them generalized coordinates. That's technically what you'd say you were taking a formal classical mechanics class, you call them generalized coordinates. And for each generalized coordinate, you have an equation of motion, an Euler Lagrange equation of motion. So I'll write them both out. So the first Euler Lagrange equation I'll do with respect to r. It's the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to little r minus the time derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to dr dot. And this is equal to zero. And then the second one is going to be dl by d theta minus d by dt dl d theta dots right there. Right, so those are the Euler-Lagrange equations of motion and now we're gonna to have to decide, well not decide, we're gonna to have to find how to you know plug in these partial derivatives. So I'm gonna go through the first one, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug the Lagrangian into this equation. So first off we're going to have d by dr and what's nice here is actually I can probably cut this except we'll probably see the box around it, unfortunately. And then I'll put this down here. Okay, so maybe I'll erase the box really quickly. Yep, there we go, that's nice. So we gotta take d by dr of that. So uh, let's actually erase this equal sign and this L here, and then bring all this stuff closer just to make it a little bit nicer. There we go. So okay, so we take the partial with respect to r, of this. So the, the only thing that has an R really is uh, these two terms right here, right? This doesn't have an R, it has an R dot, this has an R dot, this is just a constant. So those two terms are the only, one that ha are the only ones that have R in them. So DL by DR, if we can do, take our partial derivatives carefully, we'll have one half M times two from the power rule times R theta dot squared. Now the, the half and the 
two are going to cancel, and then we're going to have minus m g. So that's the first term. So we're writing this. This is m r theta out squared subtract m g big m g. Sorry, I forgot there's multiple m's here. And now we're going to take d l d r dot. Now I'm not going to copy it again. I'm just going to let's see. I'm just going to look at this Lagrangian up here. And the terms that have r dot are the first term, the second term, and that's it. So just looking at this, again, we'll have 1 half big M. Now we bring down a 2 from the power rule, r dot. So there's that. And then we have plus 1 half little m times 2 r dot. Again, the half and the 2 cancel out. So we have m r dot plus m little m r dot, sorry. Again, I keep forgetting that there's two separate m's. But remember, we still need to take the time derivative of that whole expression. So this ends up being, so taking the time derivative of that whole thing, we can factor out an r dot and just have big M plus little m r dot dot because we're taking the derivative of just that r dot right there with respect to time. So the derivative of r dot with respect to time is r double dot. Hence the two dots I've drawn on this R right here. And so finally, we have the pieces of the, of the Euler Lagrange equation. If we write it all out, let me just double check. Yep, we have it all here. We'll write M R, no, R squared, just M R. M R theta dot squared, subtract M G. And then we also have a minus big M plus little m R double dot. This equals zero. And I'm going to just add this term to the right side, the right hand the rightmost term to the right hand side will have m r theta dot squared minus big m g is equal to big m plus little m r dot and that is our first equation of motion so this is the first eom eom being equation of motion so there is the equation of motion for r now let's get the equation of motion for theta and where are we going to start? We're just going to start back up with the Euler-Lagrange equation again for theta now. So we first need to take dl by d theta, and we're just going to look at the Lagrangian, and we're going to notice there's actually no theta terms in the Lagrangian. There's a theta dot, but there's no theta. So the Lagrangian, with uh, the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta, is equal to zero, and this means a special thing. It means theta is a, uh, there's a special term for it. Now it just slipped my mind. It's a, it's an ignorable coordinate is one way to call it. It's an ignorable coordinate. And what does that mean? Well, essentially, if you have an ignorable coordinate, that means the momentum associated with that coordinate, ignorable coordinate, is conserved. So the momentum in the theta direction is conserved. And we owe this to a very, very smart person, a very renowned physicist and mathematician. Uh, this is thanks to Emmy Noether and her theorems. So thank you, Emmy Noether. We are in your debt. So moving on now, we can go on to the next piece of the, Lagr of the Lagrangian for theta, which is d by dt. Now we have dl a d theta dot, right? And then of course we just have the one term with respect to theta dot, which is this one up here, which is this one right here, right? So just taking a look at it, we're going to have, this is equal to one half m, that's a constant, I'll have d by dt, m r, make sure I get all my terms right, we have r squared uh, theta dot, Oh, sorry. I have to take the um, I have to take the partial of that first. So this is two theta dot. Okay, right. So this just comes from this right here. That's taking the Lagrangian with respect to the theta dot, and now we apply the time derivative operator on that. So we have one half m. Uh, let's see. Do I have do I have more m's than I need? Yes, I do. I have two m's. Sorry about that. Get rid of that second m there. 1 half m r squared times 2 uh, theta double dot. 
double dot again coming from this time derivative acting on the dot term right there. So all in all, we have the equation of motion for the theta variable being zero subtracting uh, m r squared theta double dot being equal to zero. I'm sorry, this is the time derivative. This is the time derivative of first, the first derivative equal to zero. Why am I writing it like this? Why am I not just writing it like that? Well, one way we can think about this is that m r squared theta dot is a constant with respect to time, otherwise known as being conserved. So this is a conserved quantity. This is the momentum associated with the with the theta direction. So this is technically the angular momentum. So we're going to call this uh, L, fancy L for angular angular momentum. So right here, angular. Momentum, and one way to remember this, or one way to think about this, is that remember that the definition of the of the angular momentum being r cross p, where p is the linear momentum, which you can write that as just being r m v sine theta, where theta is the angle between r and p. But if we have the little m right going around like this, we have a uh, we have the position variable here, r, and then the tangential velocity is going to be at a 90 degree angle with respect to r. So this v and this r are at 90 degrees, so this ends up being 1 because the angle is 90 degrees. And also we can write the tangential velocity, where right, this is the theta, so let's say this is the theta velocity. We can write that as being r m uh, we can write this as r theta dots, right? That's the relationship between the tangential velocity and the angular velocity. So this is just um, r squared theta dot. So that is exactly the same as that up there. So that's the angular momentum. So sorry that was a bit long, but that's just showing you that's the angular momentum. So the angular momentum is a constant throughout this whole process. So that's amazing. We've figured out that through a ignorable coordinate theta, we found out that its momentum is conserved, which I told you so, but now we've just showed it. So that's awesome. And now I think I'm going to end the video here because we've just gotten our two equations of motion. So our, our two equations of motion being uh, this one up here and then this one right here, which is just minus d by dt mr squared theta dot equals to zero. So that's our first part done. We had to get the Lagrangian and determine the equations of motion. Now we're going to determine the conditions for a circular orbit for little m and finding the radius at which that occurs. So stay tuned for next time.